Hello and welcome to highlights from round 17 of the Barclays FA Women's Super League. Here's what we've got coming up for you in today's show. Manchester City travel to Spurs, looking to close the gap on their rivals for a top three spot. The Gunners wanted to make sure they stayed out in front in the title race. They visited Brighton. And after a difficult week for Chelsea off the pitch, how would Emma Hayes' side react at home to Aston Villa? We start with newly crowned Continental Tyres Cup champions, Manchester City. They travel to the Hive, looking to avenge a controversial defeat to Tottenham in the reverse fixture back in September. Watching over the action at the Hive was your commentary team of Pierre Mullenstein and Rachel Brown Finnis. Let's have a look at the two teams then. Rianne Skinner names two changes to her side who were held to a goal of straw at Reading last weekend. Rebecca Spencer replaces Tina Rika Corpella who drops to the bench while So Yun Cho replaces Asmita Ale who also makes the Spurs bench. Rachel Williams has scored four WSL goals against Manchester City. No player has ever scored more times against City in the competition. As for the visitors then, Manchester City, Gareth Taylor was full of praise of his side after they fought back to beat Chelsea in the League Cup finals, rewarded and named exactly the same team who lifted the cup at the weekend. Ellie Rioburg has bounced back since her injury, so it's her seventh game in a row since then. Lucy Bronze recently made it 100 appearances for the Blues. She spotted Lauren Hemp in some space. That's a nice ball. And here is Hemp. Yes, away from Percival, decides to shoot, not quite cleared away, and in the end, they did enough Spurs, put it into the hands of Becky Spencer, but that was a close opportunity there. Wonderful ball from Kira Walsh, and that's what she can do, given space, and Lauren Hemp, if you let her run inside, it's only a brilliant block from Molly Bartrip that stopped that being a clear goal. Neville. And we're on back to Neville, who's able to get the ball into the box. Lucy Bronze with an important headed away. And Ayan in the end, into the side netting. Really textbook build-up play. And that looping ball to the back could have been dangerous. Ayan only come on sort of 10 minutes ago, just swivels and strikes it powerfully, but just low and wide of Ellie Roebuck. Well, the corner kick comes in. Brilliant goalkeeper from Becky Spence. Hayley Rasso was all over on that cross. Dealt with that brilliantly. Back out to Bronze. Here's Caroline Witt. Swings the ball in. Alan White was arriving too, as was Lauren Hemp. Back out to Stanway. Stanway looking for some space, and in comes the collision with Josie Green. And a free kick for Manchester City. Got the draft excluder, I think that's perfect for the women's game. The walls are not as tall as in the men's game. Will be Caroline Witt to hit one in. It was a decent save off the post and Becky Spencer went the right way too. Well, I think the wall did its job until the replay. I can't see whether it went just round or over the wall. Goes just over the wall, great effort. Walsh. Manchester City looking to go again, and this is a nice pass through to Rasso. Rasso takes a shot again, a fantastic save from the Tottenham Hotspur goalkeeper. The boy's got her angles right, Becca Spencer. Brilliant run from Hayley Rasso. You can see Georgia Stanway picks her out hard and low, I think the textbook would have said, but keeps it high and gives Rebecca Spencer a chance. Lucy Bronze driving forward now, Rasso is available, finds it to Ellen Weiss hanging in the area, Rasso crosses it, another great save! <laughs> On the rebound, Caroline Weir gets another goal for the Blues, 
Manchester City finally break the deadlock. Caroline Weir with her fifth goal in the last four appearances. It's bumbled in really as Molly Bartrip's trying to clear the ball. It ricochets. Caroline Weir though, just as she always is, in the right place, in the right time. Harrop with the ball into the box, Neville's there too. And with that comes the collision with Ellie Roebuck. Both players committing to the ball. Wow, she got wiped out there, Ellie Roebuck. Does amazingly well to hold on to the ball. Bartrick with the ball forward. Well, back there from Ellen White, and now Manchester City can be away. Stanway with the shot, and Jess Park was in space, and perhaps frustrated that she didn't pass it. But Georgia Stanway found herself some space and had a good go. Has a brilliant run from Georgia Stanway. Drops the shoulder, goes inside, get a bit of space. Had deserved a goal. It's Ali Roebuck now who is down and receiving treatment again. I think she's saying that her eyes are. A bit fuzzy. You would imagine it's a symptom of the clattering with Ashley Neville 10, 15 minutes ago. If there's any sign that there is a potential concussion, we know what the duty of care is from the medical staff. And with that goes the full-time whistle. What an important three points that is for Gareth Taylor's side. It wasn't an easy one, it was a real battle, but in the end, Manchester City clinical again, thanks to Caroline Weir. It was a messy goal, but it was bundled in. She was in the right place at the right time. So at full time, Tottenham Hotspur nil, Manchester City won. Well, it's an important win, you know, against the team that's competing in and around us in the league. So, uh, you know, Spurs have been on a good run this season. They're They've got lofty ambitions in terms of what they're trying to achieve. So to come here on a difficult pitch, uh, which probably stopped us from playing our normal game, was um, was a really hard-fought victory for us. I thought we did really well. We made it really difficult for them to play through, created a few problems in terms of the press that made them make decisions that they weren't particularly comfortable with. But for a, you know the type of goal to concede is, is tough. But you know we've worked really hard to limit their chances from open play. We can't play the blame game but the pitch and the conditions are kind of affected us today but we battled through and we managed to get the three points and scrappy goal but the own count. To Brighton next who hosted league leaders Arsenal. The Gunners having won all seven previous WSL meetings between the sides including January's meeting at Meadow Park. Commentary for this one comes from Ben Andrews. Let's take a check on the team news. For once, no Williams at the heart of the Brighton defence. And Megan Connolly drops to the bench. Emily Simpkins comes into midfield. It looks like Covisto will revert to a more defensive role here. Ellie Brazil is back in from the start. And Danielle Carter faces the club with whom she played for almost a decade and won so many medals. For Arsenal, a couple of changes at the back and one out wide. Out go the absent Raphael and fellow new signing Wienreuter. She drops to the bench, so too Katie McCabe. Noah Maritz returns as the regular at right back. Wuben Moy comes into central defence and Caitlin Ford gets the start further forward, complementing that excellent front line that already includes Mead, Miedemar and the recent recruit Black Stenius. Catley goes short with the corner. Little to Mead. Dangerous ball, looping header. 
And there's the first action for the Brighton keeper, Megan Walsh. That was awkward. From that kind of cross, only a loopy header will do it, really. And it was looping, and it was looping in. Past Williamson, meanwhile, Walsh, twice over, Megan Walsh. Arsenal knocking on the door already. And Brighton haven't let them in yet. I'm sure she was expecting a busy evening. Turning out that way. Excellent again from Miedemar. Ford middles it, and Blacksteadius finishes it. Brighton hope for a flag, it's not coming. The league leader's in front. Great pass. So often it's the pass before the assist that really matters. Miedemar provided it. Ford put it on a plate, and Blacksteadius, well, she couldn't miss. It's 1-0. Meadermark picked up the loose ball here. Mead is with her. And she snuck it through. Absolutely brilliant. Meadermark again. And Beth Mead scores for the third time in three different games against Brighton this season. And the league leaders are looking good for another win already. It's 2 0, and they absolutely deserve it. Such a delicate little pass here. Look at that. That. It's a touch of genius, and it's a, a cool finish from another super player. She's on for the cutback here, as Black Stenius glances in number three. Five minutes to half-time, it's game over. Stinder Black Stenius on a hat-trick. Arsenal on the rampage, and Brighton on the rack. She's got two, the Gunners have three, and they're going five clear. It's in towards Carter, surrounded by red and white. Hungrily won back by the always energetic Beth Mead. Black Stennis has done well, he's made him up. Look at Catley go. And now Ford. And Mead, and Meadamar, what a goal this would be! And Walsh stops it from being so. Meadamar on the end of a move for once, having been involved in the build-up. Brilliant Arsenal counter. This is Brighton's problem. They want to get back into the game, however much of a long shot that would seem. They have to have bodies forward. They did, they nearly get done. This is such a good squad. And of Arsenal. Really is. The players that fill their bench every week would start for most. Little into knobs. Meet him up. McCabe again pushed out. Is this the moment? Oh, Nikita Paris, it should have been. And still she waits for that first league goal for her new club. Well, the job was done before the break. Arsenal saw it out thereafter. Two goals for Black Stenius, another masterclass from Meadamar. Beth Mead in the middle. They were way too good for Brighton here. They've blown them away. And if anything, 3 0 is a flattering scoreline for the home side, not the guests. Final score on the south coast Brighton 0, Arsenal 3. What we have experienced playing against Brighton, it's so important that we play with intensity and, and try to bring them to, to a state in the game where, the, where they can't handle it. That's have been the key to success the two other times we have played them. So, and I thought we did it very, very well today. When we are playing with that intensity and we have a good decision making on when to go forward or not, we're a very, very good football team and we need to remember that and keep on doing it. I actually thought in the second half, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that they 
took their foot off the gas maybe, but we seem to combine a little bit better with the changes we made. So disappointing first half, a better second half. You know, we didn't concede any more goals, so relatively pleased with that. Next to Kings Meadow, where Chelsea played their first home game since owner Roman Abramovich was sanctioned by the UK government following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. That uncertainty had to be put to one side in order to keep their title challenge on track. They hosted Aston Villa. Commentary comes from Michael McCann. Millie Bright making a 150th appearance in the WSL today. And she's got that through. And Wrighton's nearly scored. It's a great bit of defending to keep it at nil-nil. by Ingle. And now Kerr battling for it with Pacheco. It's Kerr. Great save by Hampton. And Hampton saves again. And it goes off the post. That is easily the closest Chelsea have come to scoring today. Or indeed either side. Patton slides in. Now it comes to Kerr. Kerr. Great save by Hampton. That is a real sign. Villa are just trying to hold out, but there's Allen! Oh, so close from Remy Allen! What a story that would have been. Villa's skipper almost putting them in front. Mere moments left of this one. Flicks off the post on its way through. This ends nil-nil. We'll be maybe not quite up with that Chelsea Arsenal nil-nil here at Kings Meadow earlier this season, but certainly dramatic for a goal this game, but it might have a goal now. Hampton makes the save. In terms of winning trophies, 18 of the last 22 major trophies going to those two. Chelsea winning 10, Manchester City winning 8, Arsenal taking the other 4. Liverpool winning the WSL in 2014, the last time someone outside of those three won a trophy. As Kerr comes through, and Kerr scores! Chelsea have done it! In the second minute of stoppage time, Sam Kerr scores a goal to keep their WSL title hopes in their own hands. Pandemonium at Kings Meadow. Heartbreak for Aston Villa. Sam Kerr comes up trumps. We were sensational today, and that is that's a tough one to take. And by the way, we're talking about the, champ the champions. We're talking about a team that potentially go on and win the league and one of the best in Europe and we're gutted getting beat 1-0 yeah, and that shows how far we've come but I'm devastated I really am and yeah it's, it's a tough one to take. I think after the week we've had that to dig that out I'm, I'm so impressed with the players we're missing so many key players for everyone to step in like they did the chances we had I didn't think it was going to come but I just so I'm it's not a surprise but I'm so proud of them. Man United have never lost away at Reading in the WSL and they made a fast start in what would prove an action-packed first half. Leah Galton finding the net inside five minutes from Hannah Blundell's inch-perfect cross. Against the run of play, the host drew level. Blundell's square pass intercepted by Rachel Rowe, who found Diana Rose on the overlap, the Canadian international beating Mary Earps into the far corner. United regained the lead midway through the half. Galton latching on to a superb pass from Alessia Rousseau before coolly rounding Grace Maloney to slot into an empty net. When Honor Bacher saw her shot hit the underside of the crossbar and clearly cross the line, she might have thought she'd scored, but the goal wasn't given. However, justice was served instantly as Rousseau found the top corner to seal the win and keep United's Champions League hopes on track. Great start, great energy. I think we hit the behind the line so quickly. And I didn't feel that Reading could deal with that, especially first half. But, but for us, we have to knock them out at that moment. We have to take as many of those chances because then you beat the psyche of the team you're playing against. We know how solid and resilient uh, Reading are as a team, but you have to knock that out of them with your performances. And I felt that we did that first half. I'd like to see a little bit more control second half. 
Birmingham have lost 16 of their last 18 WSL matches, but made a bright start against visiting West Ham. Lucy Quinn finding space before forcing a save from Anna Leet at her near post. The only goal of the game came just before the break. Adriana Leon with the finish from a Katrina Svitkova corner. Darren Carter's side offered little in response and were fortunate not to find themselves further behind when substitute Lisa Evans broke from her own half before placing her shot narrowly wide of the far post. They're a tough team to play, especially here on a great day in Birmingham. Um, and they've shown that they have uh, pushed teams all the way and they did that to us. Credit to us for uh, dealing with those situations and coming away with three points. Having lost each of their two home WSL matches under caretaker manager Chris Roberts, Everton found themselves trailing inside five minutes against Leicester. Gemma Perfield with the well-placed finish for the visitors. Toffees levelled midway through the half. Ashley Plumtree robbed of possession by Anna Anvergaard, leaving Tony Duggan to round Sophie Harris in the Leicester goal. Five minutes before half-time, the Foxes were caught again. This time it was Anvergaard who pounced and finished emphatically. Leicester equalised moments later. Sam Tierney heading home. Perfield's deep free kick after the touch on by Plumtree. Anvergaard grabbed her second of the game and the winning goal. Hannah Benison's cross deflected into her path and the Swedish international showed great awareness to flick the ball past Harris. That's a third straight win in all competitions for Everton. Confirmation of the results from match day 17 of the Barclays FA Women's Super League and United kept their Champions League hopes alive with a dominant display against Reading. Everton overcame Leicester in an entertaining bottom of the table clash. Manchester City maintained the pressure on the top four with a narrow win over Spurs. Chelsea left it late to beat Villa. West Ham secured three important points against Birmingham and Arsenal proved too strong for Brighton. The Gunners remain in top spot, five points ahead of Chelsea in second, but the Blues do still have those two games in hand. United are in third with a three-point cushion now over Tottenham. City stay in fifth, but have narrowed the gap to fourth place. Everton leapfrog Villa, while Birmingham sit rock bottom on four points, eight adrift of Leicester City and safety. While it might be looking gloomy for Birmingham, at the top of the WSL, it's still all to play for. Bye for now. Arsenal on the rampage, and Brighton on the rack. Chelsea have done it! Manchester United get the early goal. What an important three points that is for Gareth Taylor's side.